Good morning, and welcome to our worship service this fifth Sunday in Lent. I love that you are the symphonic winds with one token stringed instrument. <laughs> Uh, I would like to welcome all of you who are here visiting because you have lovely family members who are playing here. Uh, I say hello to you, even if I haven't a chance to meet you personally. I hope that you will feel, will feel welcomed in this place. Also, for our kids, and just a reminder, we have our playground up here. I love having kids up here playing with the toys and participating in the service. So if you've got kids and want to come down and let them share that space, it would be great to have them there. So welcome. I pray that God touches you the way you need to be touched today. As you are able. During this time of Lent, we take a moment to pause and prepare ourselves with the time of confession and forgiveness. Begin in the name of the God who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love, 
and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the
God. You prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new things you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our lessons. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, and I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the third book of Philippians. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Gospel of John, and I am going to confuse and give you lots of consternation because what is written in your bulletin is the NRSV version, and I am going to read from the message. So I invite you, put your bulletins down, and just listen. Six days before Passover, Jesus entered Bethany, where Lazarus, so recently raised from the dead, was living. Lazarus and his sisters invited Jesus to dinner at their home. Martha served. Lazarus was one of those sitting at the table with them. 
And Mary came in with a jar of very expensive aromatic oils, anointed and massaged Jesus' feet, and then wiped those feet with her hair. The fragrance of the oils filled the house. Now, Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, even then getting ready to betray him, said, Why wasn't this oil sold and the money given to the poor? It would have been easily brought 300 silver pieces. And he said this, not because he cared two cents about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of their common funds, but also embezzled them. So Jesus said to Judas, Let her alone. She's anticipating and honoring the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you. You don't always have me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You've got your NRSV version, so you can go read it as you're uncomfortable with the message translation, which I happen to love because it's in my kind of English. I, when I do chapel with the kids, I do chapel here with the, the little bits from the preschool on Wednesday mornings. And I love it. And I love that they've gotten to know me. And as I'm walking down their hall, they say, Hi, Pastor Ellen. Hi, Pastor Ellen. I love it. Well, one of the things I've realized with little bits is it's helpful to have, to tell them that they're going to be learning a word. So we practice Zacchaeus, because we sang Zacchaeus was a wee little man. I won't make the symphonic winds play Zacchaeus was a little, little man. Th David, you and I will be talking about that. And we learned, well, last, sun last Sunday, because we're two, or last Wednesday, because we're about two weeks out, we learned Hosanna. They had paper palm fronds because they were learning about Palm Sunday. So Hosanna was the word that they learned that day. We practiced saying it. So today, I am going to think of you as my next set of preschoolers, and I'm going to give you your word for the day. It's reverence. Nice SAT word. For those, I don't know, the SAT is going away, so maybe even college, future college students don't need, don't, don't need to worry about knowing words like this reverence. But... When I say reverence, what do you think of? I put the confirmands on the spot this morning because I asked them, and they're like, uh, we don't know that word. Well, worship, respect, caring, those are the words, that's kind of what reverence means, right? Right? As I was preparing for this sermon, I, I do a thing that I was taught in seminary that I have continued doing. I don't know many people who do, but it works for me. I write a line that is called, I call it the focus statement. Where, and it's all about God. That's the first thing I write in preparing my sermon is, I want to write something that's just about God. It's not about what God will give me, what God wants for people. This is all about God. And it helps me shift my mind into the focus is on God. The second thing I do is then write a, another statement of what I hope I and you will get out of the message that I am delivering with God's help. Well, when I was starting to write this sermon, I wrote, God desires reverence. Came out of my fingertips. And I stopped and went, whoa, do I? Do I believe in that? <laughs> or what does that mean? And as I reflected on that more, I started thinking about, yes, God desires reverence. And that took me to Exodus 20. Perhaps you know this. Then God spoke all these words 
I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make, it, uh, make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blesses the Sabbath day and consecrates it. Do you recognize those words? Anybody know what Exodus 20 is commonly known as? Come on, folks. I gave, it's three of ten. Is that a hint? What is it? Come on, I need to hear you. Ten Commandments. Those were the first three of the Ten Commandments. Okay, we're going to go back to Sunday school here. I shouldn't have said they're all preschool. This is, okay, we're working on this one. So that was the basics of God desires reverence. God specifically says how God wants us to revere God. Let's move on to something else. Perhaps you've heard this one. One of the scribes came and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, What commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answered, The ver first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So how do these connect with our beautifully read lessons and our gospel story today? We have Mary and Martha and Lazarus who... Lazarus, who just recently was dead enough that there was a, don't move the stone away, it's going to stink really bad. And Martha, who said, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Mary, who said so loudly in front of all the people who followed her out, yes, I believe that you are our Savior. She said it so loudly and so clearly that everyone around her also realized who Jesus was. So we have these three precious friends of Jesus together at a meal. And Martha is doing what Martha does. She's feeding everyone. And Mary comes in and she brings this jar of nard, as the NRSV says. I love expensive, fragrant oils. And Mary takes this oil and she bends down. And Mary takes this oil and she bends down. She kneels down. And she pours this oil on Jesus' feet. And then she massages Jesus' feet with that oil. And then she takes her hair out of its wrapping and she uses her hair 
to wipe the oil off of Jesus' feet. That is reverence. So why did Mary reverence Jesus so much? What motivated her? Gratitude to God for the life of her brother. An acknowledgement of Jesus who is real, the real God incarnate. Awareness, perhaps, of the political situation and that Jesus was getting close to being picked up by the police, which is true. But Mary chose a reverent act that upset somebody, right? Probably less about the money and more about the reverence. <laughs> One of the baptized, baptized children of God who I love, who I love that he likes my voice. What is reverence? In our 9 o'clock service, we got to play with a, a prism and a flashlight and look at a rainbow. Because, you know, with a prism, find, find light, white light through it, and you get Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And what we talked about with the kids was wow moments, our reverence moments. When we stop and we say, wow, isn't that beautiful? Or, wow, that little seedling is actually growing, and it looks, it came from this thing that looked dead, and it's now alive. Or we listen to beautiful music played by a group of people who came together yesterday to rehearse, and I heard a lot of, I got to go home and practice. Hard music that you're giving to this place. That is reverence. That you're taking your time this morning to give us the gift of your gifts from God. That is reverence to God. For artists, for whatever you do, Giving reverence to God is taking that pause and saying, wow, this is amazing. Little ones, aren't they wows? Aren't they reverence to God? That's what Mary was doing. The important thing about reverence to God is that when we reverence God, when we pause and say, wow, God, you are amazing, we then are filled with the energy to go out into the world and take care of those who need to experience God's love, God's care, God's kindness, God's compassion. See, that shifts us from being like Judas Iscariot, focused on the money, and turns us into Marys who say, God, you are first. I will reverence you, and then from there I will serve you by serving my neighbor. When we reverence God, when we take that time, when we see the blue bonnets and the Indian paintbrushes on Mopac and 35 because we're going too slow to ignore them, and we say, wow, aren't they beautiful? Isn't spring marvelous? Wow, God, 
You are amazing. We are letting God into us. So, my challenge, my encouragement, my hope for you this week, this last week of Lent, is that you find a way to let reverence be a part of who you are. And I have this prayer that I'm going to close with by Dr. Karen Eshelman. It's from Women's Uncommon Prayers. It's called The Prayer of Devotion. Still my soul, that I might pray thee, Calm my mind, that I might hear thee. Light my vision, that I might see thee. Unveil my heart, that I might truly love thee. Bend my knee, that I might adore thee. Loose my tongue, that I might exalt thee. Come within, that I might know thee. Give me wings that I might ever sing thee. Amen. we reverence God is through the words of the Apostles' Creed, which sometimes have become rote memory, or we learned them in confirmation class, and why do we have to say them? 
But really, this is a statement about who our God is. So I invite you to join with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Do a new thing in the church. Free us from paradigms that no longer serve the gospel and bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Do a new thing for creation. Reverse the trajectory of climate change and environmental catastrophe. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness, and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Do a new thing within us. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the devalued. Deliver us especially from the scourge of racism. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We ask God that you put your blessings, your love, healing on Peggy, Raven, Carolyn Elmshauser, Joy, Carla, Paul, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for Linnell Brown, Zach Swenson, and all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with one another. I invite you to be seated as we continue now with our offering. And thank you to all of you who continue to support St. Martin's. And I'd like to remind everyone that you can automatically, which I think is a god wow, automatically uh, contribute by, through Realm, and like I do, and like other people do. So please keep that in mind. And we, we use your funds to support the needs of the, of the community. Thank you for all that you do.
us pray. Extravagant God, you have, you have blessed, blessed us with, with the fullness, fullness of creation. creation. Now, now we gather, gather at your, at your feast, feast, where you, where you offer us the food that satisfies. That satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O oh God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O oh God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O oh God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, again, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to each of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new, new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, 
we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, and throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. And together, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. They're a wow that God loved us that much, that he came to be with us. This is God's gift for all people. All are welcome at God's table. We will commune by intinction. You will receive bread, and then we ask you to hold it, and then when you get to the, the bowls, you can dip the wine and then consume as you go back to your seats. All are welcome at God's table. Please come.
Please stand as you are able. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. I'm going to invite, and invite the dynamic duo to come forward and get ready. But I'm going to grab a couple of announcements before you get, okay? Is that okay? So this next Saturday, no, yes, next Saturday, I'm, I'm so confused about dates. The 9th of April, we are having a communion class for anybody who's fourth grade or younger. We're making bread. We get to, we're going to have fun making bread and talking about what communion is. So if you know of any kids who would like to participate, even if they've already been receiving communion, this is just a time to... to to be a kid and think about communion and, and experience that. So please let me know how many, uh, if you'd like to come, because I just want to make sure I have enough ingredients, because everybody's taking home a loaf of bread to bake at home. And they're going to have a recipe that they can teach parents how to make, and grandparents. So if you've got grandkids that you think would be interested, invite them too. Uh, the other thing is we've got Vespers. Our last Vesper service is 7 p.m. on Wednesday in the park, 6.30. Uh, the Welka ladies are going to be providing food. I in, want to remind all of you that you are welcome to park on West, I think it's West Avenue. Is it West Avenue or Street? Yeah. That's West Avenue, I think. I can never remember if it's a street or an 15th Street, 15th at West, yes. There, we've got parking up there, so you don't have to walk up the steps or go up the hill. So please join us, if you're, you know, and we're going to park in there or park on the street and come in that way. We're also going to be having Easter in the park after our second service on Easter Sunday. We will be having a lot of activities in the park including uh, the high school students are going to be making hot dogs and hamburgers uh, for asking for donations to support their activities. We're going to have an Easter egg hunt. I think we've got the cornhole is going to be set up. They can play games. The jazz band is going to be playing. So mark your calendar for Easter to stay after and join us for a lot of fun over there in the park. And again, you can park up on West Avenue so you do not have to walk up the hill. You can be up on that top part. And we've planned that so anybody can get food and listen from up there without having to go down the hill. I think those are my announcements. Okay, you two have the microphone. Is it turned on? Oops. The dynamic duo is at it again. Go for oh, here it. Here we are. Hi, I'm Bunny Oliver, and Judy and I are here to uh, tell you about an exciting event that's going to take place here on Thursday evening, April the 21st. It'll be a fundraiser for Ukraine, for the people who are experiencing so much over there. Um, have you heard the term God wink? I hadn't heard that, but uh, just a few days ago I was, I was introduced to it, and it means small coincidences, which really aren't coincidences. They are divine or uh, of divine origin. <clears throat> excuse me. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, this event, I think, has come about that way. It's just been from a little seed that was planted in my mind, and it's mushroomed. Uh, I, like so many of us, I had been watching the news and so troubled about what was going on in Ukraine and wondered if there was a way that I could help in some concrete way help the people of Ukraine. And I had an idea about an online art auction. And it was going to be simple. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, the next day, I saw a Facebook post of a 
real good friend, artist friend of mine who lives in Nashville or in the Nashville area. And she was very concerned about uh, her friends in Ukraine who she met when she was teaching an art workshop there. And she had gone over with a group of doctors who had been working there for quite some time and taught art. And she wasn't able to get in touch with her friends, so she didn't know if they were safe or not. And I told her about my idea, and she said, oh, that's great, let's do it. And then I mentioned it to Judy Beglau, and she jumped on with both feet right away, as you know Judy is prone to do. And, and so we got excited about it, and then Pastor Ellen said that many of us, of our congregation, had been asking, how can we help in Ukraine? What can the church do to help? And so when I told her about it, she wanted St. Martin's to be involved. And she uh, envisioned hosting an event that would include music and art and food. <laughs> and uh, so, so we got together, we got Tim on board, and, and that's what we're going to have that evening. Thank you, Bunny. Um, when we first started talking about this, which was literally, I think, a week and a half ago, so it's, it has gone from zero to 60 in 0.3 seconds, um, we wanted to come up with a, a tagline at first, we were thinking, to tell what our mission is and who we are. But we instead came up with a logo and our, the name of the ongoing initiative that we're beginning with this event is Heart for Ukraine because it was our hearts that were moved when we saw what needed to be done and the help that needed to take place for Ukraine. We, we knew that a lot of people were identifying from the call of their heart to make a difference. And I said this at early service when Pastor Ellen talked about Mary in the story, her heart called her to go out there and buy some nard, the precious thing, and put it on the feet of the one she loved who was her savior. And when we help the least of these, we're also honoring and revering and reverencing God. So um, Heart for Ukraine, you'll see it everywhere. If you see it on Facebook or Instagram, please share, share, share. The more people that we have here Thursday night, the bigger kickoff this will be, and other events will be announced later. Um, we're donating the proceeds of all our events to three charities, two of them you are familiar with, Lutheran World Relief, and Doctors Without Borders, and a third I want Bunny to tell you about her personal connection to. Another God wink thing. Uh, my friend I spoke about, Laurie, introduced me by email to the doctor who she went to Ukraine with his group, uh, the doctor who founded that, Dr. Gary Jerkins. And uh, they have been working in, in Ukraine for 20 something years and uh, mainly through a group called Healing Hands and they provided medical care, medical medicines and med medical supplies which are very hard to get over there right now. But they also started a nonprofit to, to uh, send kids to camp and for university scholarships and of course they've had to change their focus uh, recently because of all the the horror that is going on there, and kids certainly aren't going to be going to camp, and there are uh, university scholarships. We they don't know if the universities will be even standing when this when this uh, is you know as as this progresses, and so they have changed their focus to work at the, at the border of Poland and uh, Ukraine. When people come over there, they give him give them great big buckets full of toiletries and uh, clothing and whatever they might need immediately when they get there, since they have left probably most everything they own behind. And so that's one of the, one of the things they're doing right now. And this group is, that they formed, this nonprofit, is called Sea Star Kids. And uh, Dr. Uh, Jerkins, we 
invited him to come to the event on the 21st, not believing that he you know, would be able to get away from his medical practice and everything, but he will be here to share his experiences and to tell you about the work that they are doing in Ukraine. And so this nonprofit, uh, Sea Star Kids, will be our third beneficiary for all the, the money that we raise through donations and the purchase of artwork. And then talking about the artwork, we uh, local artists, and a lot of them well-known, some of them not so well-known, are giving the work that they have created from their hearts, and they are, um, it will be available for sale. It's not an auction, it is a, a literal sale, and that will be available that night. Um, and we're gonna need volunteers. We have a lot of people who have said that they will, they're on board and they want to help us. We'll need people receiving the artwork when the artists deliver it, hanging the art show, uh, taking down the art show. We hope we'll sell every piece that's available, but that's probably uh, uh, not likely. And so the, the artists will come to pick up their work. And we'll need ushers, and we'll probably need other, other uh, help, but we it will become apparent as this time grows, grows near. I think that's uh, so real quickly, we uh, will open the doors at 6.30, and there will be a time in the fellowship hall where you'll be able to preview the art and grab some pre-concert um, food to give you sustenance through the hour concert and we're honored and grateful to Tim O'Brien for arranging a concert that's going to knock your socks off so bring your friends um, after the concert there'll be post concert food in the fellowship hall and more buying of art and donations all night long Thrivent's providing a platform where we'll be able to send donations to them and they'll pay the fees so it's a collaboration of a lot of people and a lot of things, and we're excited. So, April 21st, 6.30, be here. Thanks. And one last thing. Thank you, choir, and for that beautiful, beautiful uh, song that you sang before the service today, and how fitting that it should happen the day that we're telling you about the work that you will be able to participate in. Thank you, ladies. Are, Atticus, are you ready to do the blessing with me? Okay, let's do the blessing together. Please stand as you are able and hear these words. Take them in and take them out. And Atticus and I are going to say them together. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen.
Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 